If you wish to succeed, really, you need four things. First, you need a good idea. Be the recognizer of a good idea. And there's all kinds of ideas, ideas of enterprise and products and services. If you want to do well, you've got to pick up something that's good. Find a human need. Find the answer. Take the answer in quality and quantity of service to as many people as you can reach in your lifetime. Success is a fairly simple formula. But you've got to have a good idea, something you believe in. And maybe you've already got one. Don't always be looking around somewhere else till you've explored where you are. A good book to read is called Acres of Diamonds. Acres of Diamonds. Unique little story about the man that went off seeking his fortune, sold his property. And on the property, they found the fortune in diamonds. So make sure you haven't walked off and left your fortune. Always looking, 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 never exploring what you already have. But be the student of a good idea. Here's the next step you need to succeed. You need a good plan, plan for procedure. And a plan here includes many things, the product plan and the implementation plan and the sales plan and your work plan. There's all kinds of plans to put together. Before the day's over, we're going to talk about game plans. Make sure it's a simple plan. If you've got other people working with you, make sure everybody can understand it. Uncomplicated. Keep it simple. Mr. Shof had this unique approach to life. Simplicity. He only went to the eighth grade in school. So he approached everything very simply. Now, he was really a reader, and he was a well-educated man, but he was self-educated. But he always approached it. He said, go the simple approach. He said to me, there's about a half dozen things that'll make 80% of the difference in your life. Half dozen. Just find out what those half dozen things are. Proceed on those. Okay. Just be boil it down to the simple parts. Good nutrition, about a half dozen adjustments in your nutritional program, and you, and you, you solve about 80% of the problems. Right? Now, you may have a certain specialized problem that needs a specialized answer. But don't always go looking for the specialized answer until you've done all the basics, the fundamentals. Let the obvious be your best teacher. Take care of those, and that might solve so much of your problem or give you such an edge on success that you don't need to go searching for some you know, weird stuff. Now, some people have specialized problems that need specialized help. I understand that. But uh, don't go off for that till you've done the seven things, the six things. Then if the six things that are basic doesn't get the job done, then go looking and searching for something that may be a little more specialized. Okay? But uh, keep it simple. That was Shof's clue for me. Somebody asked me one time what I thought of transactional analysis. I said, sounds good. Right? Everybody ought to make an analysis of their transactions. <laughs> and if they're not good, change them. Hey, go for the simple approach. And I know that, you know, some human emotions and problems are a bit more complicated and need a bit more specialized help. But make sure when you go for specialized help, you get a specialist. I'm a bit suspect of some of the programs that put a general audience through specific things. Um, sometimes it can be a bit dangerous. But take the simple approach. Make sure it's simple. Make sure you can understand it. Other people can understand it. We learn to do that in the sales process, right? Guy says, well, I'm not doing too well. Maybe you can help me. I say, sure, I can. How many people did you talk to yesterday? Guy says, well, yesterday I had these other things uh, going on, and I really didn't get to it. I said, then we've identified the problem already, right? <laughs> and we've only been talking 10 seconds. All right, we got right to it. I mean, it's just fairly uncomplicated. Simple. Now, here's number three. The third step to success is the passing of time. Learning how to handle time is one of the big challenges in the road to success. Impatience, see, probably will ace you out of the future about as quick as anything else. Impatience. 
not being able to last from spring till fall. And I know sometimes it's difficult, especially if you've borrowed the money. <laughs> and the creditors are on the line and the phone is ringing. Did you ever notice the difference in the ring of the phone when you're doing well and when you're not doing well? I mean, it just, it rings different, right? I remember those times in my life when the phone rang, right? I go, ah, like this, right? I mean, it jars all of my, the fine ends of my nerves, right? It's because most of those calls back there during some of that period, right, were not the calls I wanted. Uh, but how to handle that downtime, the struggling time, the summer time, when bugs you haven't even identified are working on your crop and things you hadn't even been told of are eaten away at your uh, garden. I mean, there's all kinds of things out there and you've just got to learn to handle the passing of time and get your way through it. And don't be so impatient. You know, some people plant a little and a few days later they're digging around saying, where's my crop, where's my crop? Hey, you got to hang in here, hang in here. <laughs> Learn to stay, stay. A lot of things you got to give time to. Give your project time. It takes time to put together a corporate work of art. It takes time to paint a masterpiece. It takes time to put together a symphony. It takes time for the project. The national project has taken some time. We've been at the Republic for 200 years. And maybe we'll need another couple of hundred for it to have its unique influence on the world. It takes time. Next is give people time. It takes people time to change and grow and catch on and learn and make the changes, develop the progress. Give your people time. And here's the major one. Give yourself time. Boy, it's easy to cut yourself off too soon. Say, so, well, I don't think I'll be able to learn it. I don't think I'll be able to do it. And you've only been at it for a day or two or three or a week or so. Give yourself time to change and grow and become a better person, develop a unique understanding, awareness. Give yourself time to let things register. We all need a certain amount of mental time so things can soak. Figure it out and let it fall into place. Give yourself time to grow. No telling how unique you can become if you give yourself time. Now one of the greatest times to handle and to utilize is time alone. Someone asked me not long ago, I said, what are you seeking currently? And I said, two things, solitude and tranquility. And when you get very busy traveling around the world and, and your life is fairly hectic in schedules and seminars and meetings and people, and I'm lecturing currently to I guess five, 6,000 people a month. And uh, you do look for those times when you can get away. That's why I've got my motor home. I got a motor home, put a Kawasaki on the back and head for the mountains and ride the Jeep trails and uh, go out and visit with the chipmunks. And, you know, just get away where there's nothing but sky and trees and breezes and birds. And, Get out there and let tranquility just soak in your soul for a few hours or a couple of days or whatever time you've got to get away. And uh, take the time. You've also got to spend some alone time. There are some things you just have to decide all by yourself. You can get feedback, you can get awareness, you can get understanding, you can get a lot of things, even from family, close friends, close, close friends. I've got some very close friends, close family. My two daughters, I'm very close to them. We're close family, but there are some things you just got to solve by yourself. And you've got to learn to handle the time alone.